2022 was a big year and by big I mean like really delicious. Um, every year in January I like to have a think about what were the recipes that you guys loved the most, that I loved cooking the most and eating the most obviously and I put together my annual guide to those best of recipes. So here are my best recipes of 2022. So in my quest to have hand pulled noodles at home more often, <laughs> I have figured out the perfect little hack here that doesn't involve hours and hours of noodle making. If you do want to make your own hand pulled noodles, I do have a video for that, but let's do the cheats version, why don't we? Um, I'm going to get to the noodles later on, but first of all, let's do our little spicy garlic prawn sauce. So I want to get my pan heating up nice and hot, just wait for it to get hot. Dax, you could have preheated this for me, you know. I was going to, but Jimbo said he was going to do it. Jimbo. Jimbo. The I'm new guy. <laughs> you had one job. Actually, it's not his job, really, yeah. is it? <laughs> so this is nice and hot, and I'm going to go in with some oil. Now, with this recipe, you can kind of freestyle it a bit because you can add more garlic. You could use chicken instead of prawns, tofu if you wanted to keep it meat-free. Um, but I'm going to go in here with garlic and lots of it because I love garlic. And I'm gonna go in with some prawns today too. So I just wanna stir fry these until the prawns are just cooked. You guys need a little bit more oil in here. I always err on the side of caution to start with because I'm gonna put a lot of chili oil in here later on. So I don't wanna overload the oil situation. Now I sliced my prawns in half lengthways for this because I mean, I think with a dish like chili oil noodles, right, you really gotta pay attention to all the little details. And I like to have lots of prawny noodle mouthfuls. I don't want just like one or two prawns in there. So thinning them out gives you more prawn per noodle mouthful, if you like. <laughs> this is looking good. I'm gonna go in now with some sesame seeds. I like to throw these in first so they get a little bit of a like toastiness to them. And now the chili oil. So I've got my homemade chili oil here. You could use store-bought chili oil. Um, if you do wanna make your own, check out my video on how to make your chili oil. But the point here is that you want a lot of it. This noodle is all about garlic prawns and spicy, spicy chili oil. So go hard. Now for like the seasoning flavors if you like. So I've got some soy sauce. And I'm gonna use some dark soy sauce here as well because this is gonna give me a little bit of a, a deeper color, which is always very nice. Mm, it's smelling really good already. Yum. So at this point, I'm gonna turn the heat off because now I wanna kinda do the noodle bits and the garnish bits. So I've got some coriander here, also known as the devil herb to some people. Not me, obviously. <laughs> and some spring onion. So I'm gonna throw these to my prawns. Now, because I'm a complete masochist, I'm gonna go in with some chili powder too because I'm me. That's optional for you though. And then finally some vinegar. So I think this little dash of vinegar really makes all the difference to this sauce because you've got um, obviously a lot of oily kind of characters going on and you want the vinegar to kind of cut through that. So this is a Chenkian vinegar, um, a Chinese black vinegar. But you can just go in, My actually my favorite substitute for this is like half balsamic, half white vinegar, because then you get a little bit more of that floral kind of character to it. So just drizzle that in and I'm just gonna let that sit there while I do my noodle things. So, hand-pulled Chinese noodles are totally doable at home, but they take a long time, and I really love noodles, so I'm always trying to figure out ways to have this dish without doing, you know, the things. So I've got here some fresh lasagna sheets, which you can get in any supermarket, and what you wanna do is just get a few sheets here, and this is so great because you can actually freeze these as well. So if you don't use the whole packet, you know, pop it back in the freezer, don't waste them. And then just tear the sheets into odd shaped noodles. So the point here is you want it to kind of look like the hand pulled ones. So you don't want to be too, you know, um, OCD about it, if you like. And then if you have a look here and get them really close, you can see that I've got that really lovely torn edge on the edge of the noodles. And that's really important because if you cut the noodles, you don't get that hand pulled texture. So that's what we want. And I want lots of, as I said, different shapes here. Thin, thick, that kind of will give you the right vibe. All right, so I have my beautiful pile of noodles here and then in goes your pasta. So because this is fresh pasta, you don't want to overcook it and it's not gonna take very long. So just kind of agitate those strands in there a little as they cook so they don't stick. 
I'm just going to get my sauce heating up again. OK, so my noodles look good. I just want to get them straight out of the pot and into my sauce. It doesn't matter if you get a bit of liquid in there. That's just going to help the sauce anyway. And now just toss everything together. And you'll find that some of the like sort of starchiness of the noodles will start to thicken the sauce and the noodles will start to like soak up some of that flavor too. Okay, that's looking great. Okay, so just pile up your noodles and prawns into your bowl. And I just want some fresh cucumber here as well because I really love the traditional way of serving these hand pulled noodles where you have that like cold, crunchy cucumber going on with the hot noodle. Just a little bit of a sesame sprinkle and just one more bit of chili oil. And there you go guys, that is my cheats version of that very classic like hand pulled chili oil noodle dish that I love. Let's get in here and make sure I've done a good job, huh? That texture is so perfect. Like, you know, you're getting that fresh noodle texture for sure, but you know, the garlic, the prawns, and yeah, a whole lot of spicy. Mm. That is so good. Hey Dax, do you reckon immune boosting is code for like hangover food? <laughs> oh, this is hangover food for sure if you've ever seen it. I could have used this yesterday. Yeah, Sunday. you could have. You could have yeah. actually, couldn't you? Would have been nice. Yeah, been yeah. Nice. This is definitely a Sunday suit yeah. for you, huh? Would have been good. <laughs> All right, so what do I mean by immune boosting? Well, I kind of wanted to cook something for you guys that, um, I don't know, helped out a little bit with that warm and fuzzy kind of healthy feeling. Um, I am all about flavor though, so you guys know that if it's healthy and I'm doing it, it still needs to taste really good. The thing that I love about this soup is there are quite a few really cool ingredients here that help you out a bit. First of all, ginger. This is great for nausea if you're feeling a little under the weather. Also great antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory properties. And while we're on the anti-inflammatory, I'm using garlic and fresh turmeric. Both those two ingredients really powerful, naturally anti-inflammatory. So that's some of the things. There's more things coming later, I'll explain. But let's get going first of all on my chicken. Now I'm using chicken thighs and I know that you guys know that I'm a legs and thighs girl. And coincidentally, did you know, chicken thighs have more iron than chicken breast. So there you go, there is actually method to the madness. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit of oil here into my pot. I'm using olive oil here, but you could use a macadamia or a grapeseed oil as well. And I'm gonna add some salt here to my chicken thighs. And the whole point with starting out with the chicken is that I really wanna get some lovely brown chicken going on because that browning that happens in the pan, that's a lot of flavor. Okay. A bit more salt on that second side. Now just let those guys do their thing. So just a few minutes here and you can see we're starting to get a lot of that caramelization, the browning happening in the bottom of the pan there. And I'm gonna flip the chicken over. And again, just let that color again. So I think with really simple soups like this one, uh, just the little details are what's really important. All of that lovely color is gonna really serve our soup well in terms of chickeny flavor. Okay, that chicken's looking good. Add it onto a plate. Now don't wash the pan out. We just went to all that trouble to get all that lovely color and flavor. Now I'm gonna add in some onion straight in there. And there's just a natural little bit of chicken fat that we have that's come out into there as well. So we don't have to add any extra oil. Make sure you're using your spoon to scrape up any of those brown bits. Okay, so my onion is lovely and soft and golden here. I have let them cook down for a couple of minutes. Now I wanna go in with some ginger and some garlic. And this guy here is your fresh turmeric. Looks a little bit like ginger, but the skin's a bit darker. And then if I cut it open, you can see that we've got a really lovely orange color there. And you just wanna peel off the skin. Now don't go touching anything like your white dress, which I happen to be wearing, um, or anything like that. Just like the powdered turmeric, this is gonna stain very easily. Now, fresh turmeric freezes really well. So if you do happen to get a hold of it, just freeze a bunch of it, like in little sections, unpeeled. And then when you wanna use it, just defrost it, peel it, and off you go. So I'm also gonna pop in some chili here. Chili contains capsaicin, which is also an anti-inflammatory. So these are all things that are very good for us. Well, they at least make me feel like I'm doing something virtuous, you know what I mean? 
Now, I need a few more spices here. I'm gonna go in with some ground cumin, ground coriander, and garam masala. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with some chicken stock. Now you can just use store-bought here, don't be a hero every night of the week, particularly not if you're hungover. Now I do just wanna sort of deglaze the pan a little bit, and by that I mean I wanna lift off all of that lovely browning business that's happened on the bottom there. So I add a little bit of stock first and then just scrape that up. Already I'm getting like lovely warming spices, healthy kind of vibes going on here. Actually, I'm just more than healthy vibes. I'm just getting like straight up flavor vibes. Smells good is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I'm gonna put my chicken back in. Pour in any juices from that resting chicken. Now, more stock. And then I just like to top this up with some water. Okay, lid on, and then basically I wanna cook the chicken's eye, obviously, until it's cooked through, but I also want all of those aromatics to kind of make friends in there and um, really kind of develop some lovely flavor and infuse that chicken stock. So I'm gonna let it go for about 15 minutes, we'll do, I think, and come back. Now, my chicken is almost done, probably about five more minutes, so I'm just gonna get a few more things prepped up here. I wanna get my noodles cooking. These are some dried egg noodles. Now we're doing a couple of different types of greens here. First of all, I'm going in with some broccolini. I'm gonna put these in sort of at the last minute. So I wanna slice them into nice little bite-sized pieces. Now with my noodles, I'm gonna drain them off and then I'm actually going to toss them with a little bit of sesame oil, which will help them from sort of sticking and clumping together, but also add a nice little bit of sesame flavor. Okay, put my noodles out into some bowls. Now let's have a look at this chicken. Mm, it smells really good. Okay, I just want to slice the chicken, almost so it kind of looks a bit shredded. You know what I mean, like shredded chicken. Now my broccolini can go in, and my kale, chicken, and then you just need to give this another like five minutes or so for the broccolini to become a little tender, the kale to melt down and that chicken to take on even more of that soupy flavor. Now one final thing here, I just wanna check the seasoning because chicken stock can vary so much in terms of how salty it is. So you'll need to go by your own taste here. Oh, that's good. Oh. You know, the spices are also warm and lovely um, and that beautiful chickeny soup flavor that's just so comforting. I'm gonna go in here with a little bit more salt and just a little pinch of white pepper. Now, of course, if salt and sodium is a concern for you, you can just leave the salt out of all the stages that I've put it in. Now, this is looking good. So, scoop out a nice steamy kind of ladle. This is the kind of soup that would freeze really well too. So if you're someone who likes to do meal planning, this would be the perfect thing to do. I would cook the noodles separately though. So cook the soup, put it in the freezer, and then you just have to reheat and cook your noodles. A couple of final things here to make it really special. Some bean shoots and some cashews. Now just adding this little sprinkle of nuts at the end, we're kind of increasing the vitamin E content which nuts have and also like they taste good. So, you know, good thing. Let's get in here and have a look, shall we? Toss all of that together, yum. Okay, let me try this out. Mmm, yum, that is definitely my kind of noodle soup. Chickeny, really lovely spices that don't kind of like, they're not overpowering, they're just kind of like a really lovely, subtle, you know, warming kind of spice situation. Mm. You could totally spice that up and add more chili if you wanted to, but that's just a really lovely, comforting, immune boosting soup. Yum. Patsy eel literally just translates as soy sauce stir fry. So for me, this is like one of those dishes that really tests you as a cook because there's nowhere to hide. It should be very simple, really great technique uh, and really good flavors. So um, let's get started on the prawn part first of all, because this is not so traditional, but I really want to like garlic up my prawns. I want like a nice, you know, hit of garlic business going on. 
So I'm gonna do my prawns with the grated garlic. Typically you kind of stir fry the chopped garlic with the vegetables and the noodles and stuff, but I really like trying to infuse the protein with some of that garlic flavor. And some soy sauce here too, sesame oil, and some pepper, white pepper here. So I think for me, Patsy eel, like a really good one, it's all about the little details. Like you should have the really smoky soy sauce fried noodles, a little bit charry, but then you also need to have a good hit of white pepper, both on your protein and at the end. Um, and then you also have the condiments, which we'll get to in a minute. So just let the prawns do their thing for a little bit. Now let's talk about noodles. So I've got these rice noodles, fresh rice noodles that I got from my Asian grocery store. They're usually found in the fridge section, but do you know a little secret? You can take them home and freeze them actually. So I like to keep a packet in my freezer all the time so that I can use them all the time. But the thing is that when they come out of the packet, they're kind of really firm. And if you try to break them up or try to like strip them out, they kind of crumble into little bits because they're really firm, I guess, because they're uh, a little cold. So the trick here is that you want to heat them up a little so they're nice and warm and they'll easily come apart and separate without breaking. So I usually do this in the microwave because it's really easy. All right, so now these guys should come apart very easily. Uh, so much easier. Now before we start stir frying, there's just a couple of other bits and pieces that we need to do. Now I mentioned condiments earlier and I think this is another really key thing that people often get wrong with a Patsy eel. You really need this hit of chili vinegar at the end. That's what I'm about to make. So just some slices of chili and some white vinegar. And this is literally the condiment you get on the street when you're ordering your Patsy eel in Bangkok and some chili powder as well is definitely, it's an optional, but it's a definite for me. So now for my green vegetables. Now, if I'm in Thailand, I use a green vegetable called kana. It's very easy to find, very common. It's quite similar to bok choy, but um, a little bit firmer. So when I'm outside of Thailand, I'll typically use bok choy, pak choy, or um, some broccolini, which I'm using today. I do quite like the broccolini because it's got a little bit more of a firmer texture. It's not as watery as a bok choy, but I do like to slice it just on the diagonal so it cooks a little bit quicker in the wok. A few more things, I just wanna get some eggs ready. And now we're in the wok. So all of this is gonna happen fairly quickly. Not as quickly as it would in like a, you know, a street cart situation where the wok is really hot and the fire is really hot. Always at home, it takes a little bit longer with stir frying because you wanna let that wok come up to temperature and I'm always talking about how like that kind of really fast wok cooking is kind of for the movies only. <laughs> Unless you have a really powerful burner at home, which a lot, most people don't, even me. And I'm gonna pour some oil in there. And now this first part is all about the noodles. So the aim here is to get really smoky, charred wok fried noodles. And to do that, we just go in with our separated noodles. And then just a little dark soy sauce here gonna give us the color that we want. And a little dash of sugar is gonna help with that kind of burning caramelization. A little bit of char, that's what I'm after. Now you just wanna stir fry these until they're soft, pliable, and then just starting to burn at the edges. If you go too long, you'll get a big sticky, clumpy mess in there. This is looking pretty good though, so I'm gonna take these out. A bit more oil here. Again, let it come up to temperature, get nice and hot. Now go in with your prawns. Spread them out and let them get a nice sear on them. And see, so this is kind of what I'm talking about. Like with domestic wok cooking, you're really waiting for that temperature all the time. The second I add the prawns, the wok temperature goes down. I need to wait for it to come back up. Um, of course, if you're in a Chinese restaurant, you've got that really high heat. You can just be there with the flames and the drama and all the things, but we have to do things a little differently at home to get the same result. I'm stir frying these now and I've already got a really nice color on the bottom of those prawns. Garlic and the prawns smell so good together. So my prawns are almost cooked through. I'm gonna now add in my broccolini. Now here's the thing with the broccolini, because it does have quite firm stems, you wanna add just a touch of water to help kind of steam and cook the broccolini through. So just a little bit in the center there. See that steam? Now we've got really beautiful, bright, 
steamed broccolini happening in there. Now just as my broccolini is nice and tender, I'm going to push everything over to the side and add in my egg. And then you just kind of want to push the egg out just to get it to cook a little more evenly. Once that egg is like at kind of a soft set, then you can start flipping it, tossing it through everything else. Now we can go in with our noodles and a little drizzle of regular soy sauce just around the side of the wok so that it, the soy sauce reaches those prawns underneath. A little bit of white pepper again and then toss everything together. And at this point now we really have a patsy eel going on. Now this is the kind of dish that will not wait for any woman. You need to get it straight out onto a plate. Final bits and pieces. So, chili vinegar, our chili powder. And there we go guys, that is a very classic technique for Thai patsy eel with like, you know, a little beefed up garlic prawns in there. Um, but let me show you how we go about eating this the right way. Chili vinegar everywhere for me. Chili powder also everywhere. <laughs> and then in there, it seems so simple that when you look at it, it looks like a very simple wok toss noodle. But the flavors, you know, you've got the beautiful charriness on the noodles. And I'm just kind of like a really ultra comforting garlicky prawn kind of flavor. Mm. And that vinegar makes all the difference. So good. Yum. So you guys know this is gonna be a dish that I love, right? Spicy, Szechuan peppercorns, that hot and numbing situation going on, so good. Um, now I always used to love to order this dish when I was out at like a really good Szechuan restaurant, um, but I thought that it might be a little difficult to make at home, but I figured out it's not if you have a little bit of technique going for cooking the eggplant, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, no, actually we'll get to it now. <laughs> we'll start with the eggplant. You were waiting for the eggplant, weren't you, Dak? I was. You were, you were. Okay, yeah. I know. <laughs> so I have these um, long eggplants. Now, um, they're often called Japanese eggplants or Lebanese eggplants. You can use the larger ones as well, but the main point is the preparation of them. So I like to take some of the skin off. I don't want to take all of it off because leaving some helps to keep the tender eggplant together a little bit. And then take the end off. And I like to make sure that these slices are fairly thin. That means they're gonna cook quite quickly when we steam them a little bit later on. And I think that gives you the right, uh, you know, surface area of eggplant to be soaking up all the yum, spicy stuff that's gonna happen later on. So the process for the eggplant is that you want to steam the eggplant. That's actually the best way to cook it so that you're kind of breaking it down and making it soft and tender, um, but you're not searing it or you're not boiling it. I think boiling the eggplant would be weird. It would get kind of, get all like weird and slimy. So steaming is the way to go. So open up your steamer and then grab your pieces of eggplant and just pile them in. And no, you don't have to salt eggplant these days because um, basically that bitterness that you used to get with eggplant has kind of been bred out of the eggplant. Um, so now you don't need to do that salting step. Now, 25 minutes, I'm gonna let that steam away. In the meantime, let's make our spicy sauce because this stuff is really good. Um, I'm gonna start off with my Szechuan peppercorns. I'm using green ones. There's green and red, right? But the green ones seem to have a much heftier kind of numbing and citrusy flavor than the red ones. So if you can get a hold of these green ones, that would be really great. i just crush those. Now, I also need some ginger and some garlic. So now we're gonna get into the wok and I need a little bit of regular oil here first. And then we're gonna go in with some chili oil. So this is my homemade chili oil. You can watch the video on how to make it, um, but you can use store-bought as well. The reason I like the homemade version is you get all these lovely spices in here. There are extra Szechuan peppercorns in here as well. So it is good stuff. Okay, so that in there, put in that garlic and ginger. Mm, that is such a good smell. <sighs> Slightly, uh, you know, clears you out. 
Now I'm going to go in with Doben Jiang. So Doben Jiang is an ingredient you would have seen me cook with on my channel a fair bit, um, particularly if you're doing Sichuan um, style dishes, you might see it as well. It's basically like a fermented chili and broad bean paste and it kind of gives you a kick of umami and saltiness as well as the spicy. Um, you can search it out online. It's widely available to order online so just see if you can find it or check your local Chinese grocer. To that I'm going to add some soy sauce, some rice wine vinegar and some sugar. Now lastly we go in with our peppercorns. Okay, so uh, our sauce is pretty much done. That sugar is dissolved. Everything is really lovely and spicy and garlicky in there. Extra hit of the peppercorns at the end is like, is really punchy. I'm gonna have a look at my eggplant now. So at this point, my eggplant should be really lovely and soft. Let's take a look. Oh, very nice. Okay, so they're not quite dressed for the party yet. They're like, it's not the most Instagram worthy stage of the recipe, but um, you want to carefully just transfer them into a bowl and carefully because they are really soft now. And I don't want to break them up too much. And then you just want to spoon that spicy stuff all over the top. And then almost as if you're tossing this like a salad, I just want you to just really gently Encourage that eggplant and the sauce to make friends in there. And then you can scoop that out onto a plate. Make sure you catch all of that yummy sauce and pour that over the top. A little sprinkling of spring onion here. And there you go. Um, a really beautiful restaurant classic that I've only just started making at home and I think I think it's really delightful. I love that red oil, like that kind of red sauce in there just looks amazing. Now the eggplant should be really nice and soft. It's almost like it kind of just melts away in your mouth and you're left with all those yummy spices. Mm. Yeah, so perfect. It's almost like the eggplant gone all creamy. Mm. Then you've got like big hits of spice and Szechuan peppercorn and then like that numbing tingling sensation you get at the end. Mm. So good. So this is actually a follower request. We had a request to make kare kare beef stew and I have to say it's not something I had made at home before so I was really excited to give this a try and even more excited because it's got like peanutty satay kind of vibe to it and honestly when I tried it out I was like yes, yes. This is my kind of beef stew. Let's get into looking at our beef though. So this is typically made with oxtail. It's an oxtail beef stew, but the oxtail at my market this morning wasn't just looking that great. It wasn't like really meaty and yum. So I'm going with an osobuco cut today, which is from the shank rather than the tail, but it will do the same sort of job with that connective tissue. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, now, even though I'm gonna be putting this in my slow cooker, I wanna start it off in the pan so I get some really nice color on my beef. A little more salt, a little more pepper. And the base of any really good stew, whether you're talking about like a French beef bourguignon or you're talking about this particular Filipino beef stew, is that you wanna really layer the flavors. So you start off getting a really lovely beefy flavor with this caramelization. Have a look at this color. It's exactly what we want. And then from here, we can start to go in with our aromatics and then finally our liquids. So that's kind of the way I think about it when I'm doing a stew. This color is looking really great. What I might do is grab my slow cooker and my beef pieces can go straight in there. Now I've got some oil and fat left in here in the pan. And the really interesting thing with this dish is using annatto seeds, that's these guys here, um, these red seeds, to flavor and color that oil. And then immediately you'll see, you start to get this really lovely ruby red color here. Now I know annatto seeds aren't widely available everywhere. Do try and search them out online or from an Asian or Filipino grocery store. Um, but if not, you could just add a little bit of sweet paprika here to give you a little bit of that red color. It does have a little bit of like a florally musty kind of fragrance to it, but mainly it's about that beautiful red color. Once the seeds have done their job though, you wanna take them out to that oil. I'm gonna add some onion. Oh, look at that color, it's just so vibrant and amazing. I love that. Garlic. 
And a little bit of salt here. Salt always helps when you are sauteing onions. Now the other clever thing that I want to do here is deglaze my pan with just a little bit of the beef stock I'm going to be using for this recipe. Just to lift off any of that flavour that's stuck to the bottom of the pan. And then into my slow cooker pot. My next ingredient here is really a little bit more about texture than anything. So I'm taking this um, sticky rice, this is a glutinous rice or a sticky rice, and it's raw. I'm going to put it into my frying pan and then toast it up. And we're going to make a ground roasted rice. And it does give you a little bit of like a toasty, peanutty flavour, which is really great. And it also thickens up your stew sauce. So see how everything is really lovely, deeply dark and golden. You'll kind of get a bit, bit of like a popcorn kind of smell when it's ready. I'll pop that in here and then just grind that to a really fine powder. Add that to my other ingredients along with some peanuts and some eggplant, some peanut butter, and then the rest of my beef stock. So at this point, I just like to give everything a little bit of a mix. My lid goes on. Now, the cooking time really depends on your slow cooker. I've got a high and low setting. So if I turn this to high, this is gonna cook in about three hours. If you're doing it on a low setting, that's gonna take six to eight hours. Some time later. Ooh, boo, boo. <laughs> So now I think we're looking pretty good. Let's have a look in here. Ah, yes. I love when something else does all the hard work for you. I really do like slow cooking because you don't have to sit there and watch it on the stove top and be stirring it. You just kind of set it and forget it, which is great. And then here's the thing. I really like to do this kind of seasoning thing at the end after all those ingredients have really softened up and really developed their flavors. So here at the end, I'm gonna add in some vinegar, fish sauce, brown sugar. Now I do want to add some extra bits and pieces here. I'm going in with some snake beans. You could use green beans if you can't get a hold of snake beans, but it is a far more classic addition for this Filipino dish. If you haven't seen a snake bean before, they're like much longer than a green bean. I find that they have a little bit more of a chalky texture and a slightly more medicinal kind of flavor than a regular sort of more sweeter green bean, if you like, but either would be fine. I'm going to pop those in and then pop the lid back on another 20 minutes just to let those extra seasonings make friends in there. So now I think we should be good. Let's have a look. Very nice. I mean, the thing that I love about this is that this beef should be uber tender. If you have a look in here, just break that open. Oh, so good. That makes me happy. So here we go. Spoon out some of that really lovely, like peanutty, shiny kind of sauce along with your beef. And see how that eggplant's really kind of like broken down and also like helped to thicken up that sauce as well. Oh, so good. So the classic way to serve this is with some steamed rice and yeah, just dig in there. Now I think with any good beef stew, you should be able to pass what I call the spoon test. So spoon goes in and that beef should just melt away. Look at that, so soft and tender. Hmm. So much great flavor there. It's just it's such a comforting kind of dish. I can see now why so many people have been requesting this dish because I feel like it's one of those kind of family dishes that you would have eaten growing up and just always craved as you got older. Oh, I love that. My freezer is never without frozen dumplings. Just, you know, pack it frozen dumplings from the supermarket. I'm not a food snob, <laughs> but what are all the different ways you can use them? So this is one of my favorite ways. We're gonna make a really rich laksa noodle soup here, and we're gonna do it in like a matter of minutes. So let's go. A little bit of oil into my wok here. And the cheat we're gonna to use today is some red curry paste instead of making our own laksa paste. And this is kind of like a, um, a curry laksa flavor. So I know there are lots of different types of laksa in the world. Uh, this one is very much a curry laksa. So I'm gonna add curry paste first. And then to give it the laksa flavor and not a Thai red curry flavor, what I need to do is add a little bit of curry powder. So I'm gonna add that in. And this is just a mild curry powder. You could try lots of different types of curry powder. You could also do garam masala as well. It's basically just adding in a few more dried spices to give you a bit more of that laksa flavor. Okay, so just get that sizzling in the oil here. 
So here's an optional extra. I happen to have some Vietnamese mint, also known as Luxa leaf. Um, it just happened to be at my local fruit shop this morning, so I grabbed some. But again, I am trying to keep this kind of like pantry weeknight friendly, so if you don't have it, just leave it out. I'm gonna pop that in with my curry paste. Add in some coconut milk. Now I've tried to really stick with some pretty solid like pantry and freezer type ingredients here. So I do have some chicken stock, but I literally just made this up from some stock cubes. So not very fancy and also very easy. <laughs> We're adding so much flavor in here. No one will know, no one will know. Now just a few other little seasoning ingredients here, a little bit of sugar and some fish sauce. So I'm just gonna let that simmer away for a little bit, let all those flavors make friends in there. Now while the soup broth is doing its thing, let's do our noodles. So I'm using some Luxa rice vermicelli noodles. You could literally use whatever noodles you have in your pantry for this one. I have my Luxa noodles, they're going in to some water. Let's toss them around a little bit so they separate a little easier. Now coming back to our soup, it's looking really lush already. It's literally been like five minutes, if that. Uh, I'm gonna add in my prawns. And again, prawns are something that I like to keep in the freezer as well, just for this kind of situation. But you could actually just leave them out or you could use chicken if you like as well, just thinly sliced chicken thigh. Now they only need about two or three minutes until they're just cooked. And this is one tip big tip that I have for noodle soups. And you might just say, well, why don't you just chuck the noodles in with the soup? Well, if you have a look at that water, it's very cloudy. So a lot of starch has come off those noodles and that is a lot of starch and a lot of flavor that you don't want affecting your actual noodle soup broth. So that's why I do it. And that's why also I'm gonna cook my dumplings separately as well. So I'm gonna pop those in there now. They just need a few minutes. And then I just had some greens kicking around in my fridge. You could use um, frozen spinach, you could use baby spinach. I just happen to have some pak choy and bok choy. Once the dumplings are ready, you can just Scoop those out to your bowl. And then I'm just gonna quickly blanch my greens in that water as well. Just because we're doing a cheats version doesn't mean we can't do a nice version, you know what I mean? Still needs to be great. And these vegetables now are beautifully tender and bright green because they haven't been soaking in like some boiling water for a long time. I just think that's the problem with vegetables. People cook them for too long. That's my one rant for the day, there you go. <laughs> okay, if you have a look here, my prawns are just cooked through. Let's get this done, people. All right, soup going onto my noodles. A couple of prawns. Now, I always get asked this question. Are prawns the same as shrimp? In Australia, we call uh, our prawns prawns, not shrimp. <laughs> Does that make sense? Although it's very confusing because Paul Hogan back way back when was talking about putting a shrimp on the barbie, right Holly? But yeah. we don't put shrimps on the barbie. We put prawns on the barbecue. That's right, people. Is that like my second rant for the day? <laughs> this looks great to me though. That's the main thing. I'm gonna put an egg on here because you've gotta have an egg on noodle soup. So we have some bean shoots here. Again, these are like optionals. If you don't have these things, it's totally fine. And then a little bit more of my Luxa leaf. So this looks totally delicious. I mean, you know, but let's not take my word for it. Let me try it and then I'll give you my word on it. <laughs> okay, let's get in here and try it. Oh, I love that you can make that kind of soup, like literally in minutes. Look at the color, it's amazing. Ah, oh, it literally tastes like it's been simmering for like hours and hours. Oh, it's spicy. Oh, that's good. Yum.